Hello, in this video we're going to learn how to find the derivatives for the inverse trig functions and uh, how to use them. Um, so for starters, the inverse trig functions, uh, uh, arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, uh, arc cosecant, arc secant, arc cotangent, um, the, uh, the, there's just a formula that you can use to evaluate any trig function, uh, any inverse trig function derivative. We're going to do that, but also I'm going to show you how to derive them. Um, so let's just start with arch sine um, for a, a start. Um, so I'm going to um, just show you uh, if we have y equals arch sine, and I'm going to call this u of x, uh, just assuming that arch sine has some function of x. It could just be x, it could be x squared plus 1, you know, who knows. <clears throat> the derivative that goes with arch sine. Uh, it's going to be u prime over 1 minus u squared. Um, so, uh, for example, if you had uh, y equals arc sine of uh, x plus 2, uh, its derivative would be the derivative of x plus 2, which is 1, over 1 minus x plus 2 squared. If you had y equals arc sine of, uh, oh, how about uh, 3x squared plus 5x plus 1, y prime would be 6x plus 5 over the square root of 1 minus 3x plus 5x plus 1 squared. So just very easy, to, uh, monkey see, monkey do situation. So I want to practice now. <clears throat> it, now it's great to know the formula. You know, I, it's certainly uh, a worthwhile thing to, to memorize. But if you forget, let me show you how you can easily derive this using implicit differentiation and triangles. Uh, so we're going to go back to arc sine. Now, um, if you don't know the derivative for arc sine, that's what you're trying to find, obviously. Um, you, there's not really any place to go here. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to choose to take the sine of both sides first. So you get sine y equals sine of arc sine u of x. And uh, since sine and arc sine are inverses, the composition of an inverse and the original function or vice versa always basically cancels out. So you get sine y equals u of x. <clears throat> now, uh, I've got something that I can deal with. I can deal with sine y. I know the derivative of sine y. Uh, however, I have sacrificed my nice y solve for a function of x. So in order to take a derivative now, since I have sine y on the left, you will be forced to use implicit differentiation. The derivative of sine y is cosine y dy. The derivative of u is u prime of x dx. So my derivative now that I'm looking for, dy over dx, divide by dx, divide by cosine y. And um, you get dy over dx equals u prime cosine y. So that is a correct derivative. Um, that's correct. Uh, it's also not very useful, useful because um, I, I really wanted my answer to look like this. Uh, I wanted it to be only in terms of x. This is in terms of not only x and y, but also a trig function. So we need to do better here. Um, so I'm going to just go back to uh, what I had uh, a moment ago where I had sine y equaled u of x. I'm going to write that as u of x over 1. And uh, now I know that sine is 
my opposite over hypotenuse. I'm going to just draw a little triangle here. Now, you always have to remember that whatever is inside sine is an angle. So this is angle y. And if you take sine of angle y, you get opposite over hypotenuse u of x and 1. And then that'll be question mark. So now I want to know question mark. I need to know, do the Pythagorean theorem. Question mark squared plus u of x squared equals 1 squared. If you subtract this over, you get question mark equals the square root of 1 minus u of x squared. Uh, and uh, so that goes right here. I'm going to write that as 1 minus u squared. Um, so now, going back to cosine y, I want an expression for cosine y. Um, and uh, I have a triangle for angle y, and I want cosine y. Cosine y is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. And by the way, since cosine's on the bottom, really we could write the derivative like this, dy over dx equals u prime. And then instead of... Uh, adjacent over hypotenuse downstairs, you could write this as u prime over 1 times hypotenuse over adjacent. Instead of just dividing by a fraction, we flip it and multiply. So you get u prime times the hypotenuse, which is 1, over the adjacent, which is 1 minus u squared. Uh, so this is uh, u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared. And that is consistent with my formula that I gave you to start with, u prime over 1 minus u squared. So a nice way to just kind of figure out, you know, where you're supposed to end up. Um, so let's uh, do another example. Uh, that was a conceptual example in terms of just u. I'm going to do an actual example with like an, maybe an x squared or something of that nature. And uh, how about we do a, a cosine this time? I'm just going to write down y equals arc cosine uh, of u of x and just tell you that y prime is going to be minus u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared. Sorry, there you go. That is what the formula for the derivative is. Um, so we're going to just start out by doing that, and then we'll do it again by um, uh, deriving it. So y equals arc cosine of 2x squared plus 1. And thus y prime is going to be negative 4x, that's u prime, over the square root of 1 minus Two x squared plus one squared. So that's the monkey see, monkey do approach. It's very simple. Uh, you just know the formula and plug in u and u prime, and that's that. If you don't know the formula, we'll derive this. Uh, again, I've got y is arc cosine of two x squared plus one. I'm going to take the cosine of both sides, and so you end up with cosine y equals cosine of arc cosine uh, cancel out. So you just get 2x squared plus 1. I'm going to write that as over 1 because I know now I'm going to have a triangle. And to this triangle, uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is angle y. Adjacent is 2x squared plus 1. Hypotenuse is 1. And uh, this will be question mark. I'm just going to fill my triangle out before I do anything. Um, I can see that question mark squared plus 2x squared plus 1 squared equals 1 squared. So question mark squared equals 1 minus 
2x squared plus 1 squared, and then finally, question mark equals the square root of 1 minus 2x squared plus 1 squared. So this is that opposite side. <laughs> Put that on hold for a moment. Uh, if you have cosine y equals 2x squared plus 1, and you now want to take a derivative. You want a derivative for, for this. y equals arc cosine 2x squared plus 1. So if I, I need a derivative in the mix somewhere. I need, you know, the derivative of this would be dy over dx. So I just need to fish out a, um, I need to fish out a expression for dy over dx. So with my implicit derivative, the derivative of cosine is minus sine, leave the y, multiply by dy. The derivative of this is 4x dx. And now if you divide by dx and divide by minus sine y, you get dy over dx is 4x over uh, negative sine y. Call that negative 4x over opposite divided by hypotenuse, and that's minus 4x over 1 times hypotenuse over opposite. And that is minus 4x over 1. The hypotenuse is 1, and the opposite was this. Square root of 1 minus 2x squared plus 1 squared. And now we'll clean up the the mess here, dy over dx so is minus 4x times 1 on top, and then we have 1 minus 2x squared plus 1 squared on bottom. And there you have it. Uh, I got the version here by derivation that I got up here by just using the formula. So you can see that you know, if you know the formula, good for you. But if you don't know the formula, it's always good to be able just to derive it on your own, too, just to be safe. I'll do one more here. Uh, we'll do secant. Uh, y is arc secant. And uh, we'll just do... x squared plus 1 here. Um, and uh, just before I get going, I want to just write down the formula for arc secant. Arc secant of a function of x uh, has a derivative u prime over u times the square root of u squared minus 1. Um, so for us here, uh, since u is x squared plus 1, my derivative would be 2x times x squared plus 1. And then u squared is going to be x squared plus 1 squared minus 1. And uh, you could actually clean that up a little bit. I'm not going to. That's your derivative. You only need to clean that up if you're on a multiple choice test because you're going to end up with x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1 and minus 1, and the plus 1 and minus 1 would disappear. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's just do this uh, by derivation uh, one more time. Uh, so if you have y equals arc secant of x squared plus 1, and you choose to take the secant of both sides. The secant and the arc secant, once again, cancel one another out. This is secant y is x squared um, plus 1. The derivative of secant now is secant tangent. Uh, for secant y, it's going to be secant y tangent y dy equals 2x dx. And uh, I'm going to divide by secant tangent and divide by dx. So I'll have dy over dx equals 2x 
over secant y tangent y. So that is a correct derivative, but it has nothing that I can really use here. So let's go ahead and make my triangle. So secant y is x squared plus 1. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So hypotenuse here is x squared plus 1. Adjacent is 1. And that is question mark. So 1 squared plus question mark squared is x squared plus 1 squared. Now you can see question mark squared is x squared plus 1 squared minus 1. And so question mark is going to be the square root of x squared plus 1, which is u minus 1. This is question mark. That will go right there. Uh, so now we're going to just fill out my derivative in terms of x and without trig functions. So currently we have 2x. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. You can see actually um, that, uh, uh, that we're going to have to flip both of these and multiply. Uh, so bear with me here. dy over dx. Is 2x over 1 times adjacent over hypotenuse times adjacent over opposite. 2x over 1. So my adjacent is 1, and my hypotenuse is that. And then my adjacent again is 1. And my opposite is question mark, which was all this mess. And now we're just going to clean things up. So we're going to have on top 2x, on bottom x squared plus 1, and then also on bottom. That. You can see that this um, this uh, derivative of arc sine by derivation is the same as this one up here, just using the formula. There's three more of them, so try them yourself. They all work the exact same way.